understanding, but I don't know how far we're going to get into spiritual understanding. Because I was studying last night, and I may have to blame part of this on Patty because they fed us like kings yesterday, so I was so sleepy I couldn't stay awake. I thought, well, if I get up blowing tomorrow, I'm blaming Patty. So you always got to have somebody to blame it on. But uh, no, I, and you know, I got up this morning and I got up early and was studying and looking and you know, I've been praying, Lord, what do you want me to, how do you want me to go? You know, I mean, sometimes you just get to the point, what do you want me to say? And to be honest with you, probably if I could have got everybody's phone number, I probably would have said, guys, I'll see you next Sunday. Let's just blow this one off. And, uh, but you just never know. I mean, I didn't know Pastor Jack and Sister Dot was going to come today. <coughs> and it's very good. Very good. But spiritual understanding, that's been on my mind. Spiritual understanding. I don't know about you, but it's, it's kind of a, uh, I don't know to you, is it like a burden? For, for one, you want not only to understand, but you want others to understand. Now, now the burden comes out in it as this. Do you ever see people just struggling in everything they do? Now, see, I'm talking, when you see strangers and stuff struggling, that's one thing. But you got family that just is always upset, worrying. And, and I'm just not talking, I'm talking church folk. Yes. And, and the reason being is because they have no spiritual understanding. I have watched people, listen guys, I, I'm just going to be honest with you. I've watched people been in church for 50 years lay on their deathbed and ask the question, I wonder if I've done enough. Now brothers, it ought not be that way. It ought not be. You ought not to ever have the question, have I done enough? Because you never can do enough. Right. It's finished. That's right. yes. It's done. Yes. Yes. The only thing you need to do is believe it. That's right. I mean, I mean, and I, oh my goodness. I believe the greatest single need in the Lord's body today is spiritual understanding. Why would I say that? Because Christ is in you. Yes, you got everything. You have the total package inside of you. Right. Yes. You do. You got it. Christ is in you. Now, I'm not talking to unbelievers. I'm talking to believers, church members. That the fullness of the Godhead bodily dwells in you. Yes. And we don't even know it. We don't even see it. We don't even understand it. So we walk around in condemnation. Yes. We walk around in lack. We walk around in a mess. Mm -hmm. Come on. Jesus wanted to impart part that. You know, he, he, the disciples here in the boat, uh, and, you know, he wants to, he said this, guys. Do you understand this? My peace, I leave with you. Yes. I, I hope you understand that. So, so, really, in the middle of a storm, he had to rebuke that storm. You know why he had to rebuke that storm? Because they would not receive his peace. I know that. I mean, you start thinking about it. He didn't call us to calm storms. He called you to carry your pillow around. Somebody's got a pillow back there they sent him. He called you to carry your pillow around and just whenever, try, you know, just go ahead and just rest. Because it ain't going to affect you anyway. I done told you we was going to the other side. I mean, you know, he told his disciples, we're going to the other side. That's right. So you can just bring your pillow, sleep on the journey, or worry on the journey. We're going to get there. You, you see what I'm talking yeah. about? So spiritual understanding. No matter what. I mean, I told you Wednesday we got up here. And, I, you know, me going through some situations in my life, and I start worrying, I start getting upset. And then I read the scripture in James, and I think I'll be like... Uh, you know, I believe it was Martin Luther wanted to throw the book of James out. And when I read the book of James, sometimes I think I want to throw it out too because he said, count it all joy when you fall in divers' temptations. I said, no, listen, guys. I might count some things joy, but, you know, this thing I ain't counting joy. Yeah. Wow. Count it all joy. And I, I mean... 
Guys, if you don't have some spiritual understanding, you can't say count it all joy. That's right. Because I'm going through something. And I, ain't, I thought joy was what we was doing a few minutes ago, jumping and shouting and singing and praising. And, but when the bus get tossed to and fro and back and forth and up and down, I ain't counting that joy. But you know why he said it counted all joy? Because it's the trying of your faith. And that faith, that it's work, or, you know, that patience, it's all working. Why? To the appearing of the Lord. That you, it's all working so that you will turn to see him. Yes. Yes. Because I don't care what you're going through. I mean, we see this with people all the time. <clears throat> I mean, somebody could not have ever prayed, have never called on the name of the Lord. But I want to tell you something, guys. I'm just going to be honest with you, but you let them get in a bad car wreck. Right? Let them be laying in that car, upside down, trapped in the car on fire. What's happening? Oh, my God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Now, if that had been us, we'd have said, well, oh, you never needed me before. But I'm going to tell you, God is rich in mercy. <coughs> He's rich always, always, always. But what I'm saying is it don't have to be the car wreck. Right. To as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. Spiritual understanding. So I wonder, i got to get my... H2O. I wonder, do we understand what spiritual understanding is? First off, I'm going to tell you, well, let me say this. Spiritual understanding. And I'm not talking, uh, not for salvation because we're talking to the Lord's body. Right? I'm not talking about for grace because we're not in the Lord's body except it be by grace. But only, really, only a handful even understand grace. Everybody has their mindset of grace, and here's what grace is to most people. Grace means, guys, I can do what I want to and get by with it, and God's grace is going to come. That ain't grace at all. I'm going to tell you what the grace of God is. Paul knew it. It's not I, but Christ. Yes. The grace of God is the cross. That's right. It's Jesus Christ. It's not a thing. And I want to say this. Spiritual understanding is necessary to us living in Christ, and it's necessary for us growing up in Christ. I mean, my God, do you realize in all of Paul's letters, every single one of them was about not only Christ in you, but you growing up. He would always say, guys, that you be no more children tossed to and fro. A child is, is under tutors and governors as long as they're a child. And that I, that I want you, even Jesus mentioned, some brought forth a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. That's maturity. Yes. He wants us to grow up. He wants us to grow up. And how? Or what is that growing up? How many times have we told our kids, you don't understand this now, but one of these days. One of these days when? When you grow up. Yeah. That's when you're going to understand <clears throat> when you grow up. So, living and growing is synonymous. What it means to live in Christ is to grow in Christ. We're never placed in Christ just to be stagnant. No. Really, we're not. We're just not there. There's a reason you were in Christ. A reason. And so, we talk about this spiritual understanding. How many different understandings are there salvation? Of, of salvation? You want to know how many they are? How many different denominations do we have? How many different views are they of, of grace? There's a whole lot of them. Yes. I mean, how many different views of hell are they? There's a whole lot of them. Yes. So, and, and, but yet, what happens is, one's got this view, one's got this view, one's got this view, and we gather up all the people that see it my way, and we call that a denomination. We call that a fellowship. Yes. I'm going to tell you what makes us a fellowship, guys. I'm going to tell you this right now. The what makes us a fellowship is the same spirit. The spirit of Christ dwells in me, dwells in you. Yes. There ain't two spirits. So we have to be in Christ. Yes. Now, we can throw our natural understanding to that right out the window. That is our fellowship. Yes. Our fellowship is in him. 
What you believe really is irrelevant, and what you really believe, you need to just bring it up there and say, Lord, I know nothing as I ought to know. Paul said, for them that think they stand, take heed, least they fall. Because I'm, when I begin to show you this about what real spiritual understanding is, you'll see, because I've told you, we're not the center of this. We have, have had this man focused, but we're not the center of this. It's Christ. Christ. Sometimes I wonder if we ought to do a Facebook survey and we ought to ask the question, what is salvation? You put that question out there. Now let's see how many different answers we get. Yeah. You know, what's your view, what's your vision of heaven? You know? I mean, doesn't everybody have a different view of heaven? Or how big's your house gonna be? How I many, you know, all this other stuff? Yeah. What's your version of hell? I mean, so what we have is our own understanding working. And our own understanding being based on how we was raised. That's right. What where did we go to church? Right. What our mom and daddies believed. I'm going to tell you this. You may not believe this, but are we white people or are we black people? Are we, are we Indian people? Are we Chinese people? All culture, all biased, all prejudice, throw it in there. We make up what we think we believe, and then there we go. Yeah. There's my view. And we call that spiritual understanding. It's not. It's a natural understanding of some spiritual things. And I'm going to tell you what, as soon as, even if it's a spiritual thing, comes into your own understanding, the first thing you'll do is pervert it. Can't be no other way. You know why? Because you've got built-in prejudice, oh, yes. built-in bias, built-in all these other things, yes. and you will pervert it. And, it, and what it'll do, guys, is, is it will make your heart callous because will say, this is my way. This is what we believe. I know people, this is what we believe by God. We're standing on If you don't like it, hit the door. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I'm right. You know why I'm right? Because I said I'm right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right because I made up my mind that I was right. And I'm right. <laughs> Therefore, that very conclusion means you must be wrong. Because yeah. there's only room for one right here. <laughs> you know, I asked this question the other day to somebody. I said, how did he make us one? How did God make us one? Yeah. When I say us, Jew, Gentile, male, female, bond, Scythian, all them. He made us one. They said, well, here's what he did. He poured out his spirit, and he done this. and it. No, 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 no. Let me tell you how he made us one. Come on. He tore down the middle wall of partition. Of, of, of partition. Yeah. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity. Having slain the enemy in his body by the cross. Making one. So you want to know how you're one with everybody? in the cross because yes. he brought Jew, he brought Gentile, he brought male, female, black, white, American Indian, Brazilian, Canadian, and even the Japanese together in one body by the cross got rid of all of them. Yes. Yes. That's how we're one. But see, that's offensive. We think, well, we're one because God, you know, he did all this for me. Yeah, here, here's what he did for you. That's what he did. The cross. It's offensive. It's offensive. We don't like that. Uh, let, me, let me see if I can tell you what spiritual understanding is not. <coughs> Maybe this will clarify what it is. <laughs> spiritual understanding is not a natural understanding of spiritual things. Most have a understanding about spiritual things, so we, so we, we set out in our minds about spiritual things let me give you an example. Righteousness. That's a spiritual thing. <clears throat> so here's what we do with righteousness. We say, ah, oh, I've read all the scriptures about righteousness. And righteousness says, the way I understand it, if you wear a green checkered shirt to church, 
you're not righteous. Because that's the way I understand it. So, you see what I'm talking about? That's my understanding. And, and, and you know, you can't, you can't have a blue shirt on either. And, and you, your earrings can't stick down because I've read about righteousness. And, and yeah. so we make righteousness a thing according to our own understanding. Yes. And we become hard to that. And then we go out and try to do it. And then we, we can gather everybody together that won't wear a green check shirt to church. And we can call that a fellowship. And then we can split off from everybody else. That is natural understanding of spiritual things. So I'm going to tell you what. Every, everyone that's separate, that has separated themselves, I can tell you without a doubt, it's a natural understanding of why we're separated. Because let me tell you what he did. Paul would ask the question, is there any schism in the body? Is Christ divided? Some preach Paul and some Apollos and, you know, I'm of Cephas. And is Christ divided? So the greatest need in the body of Christ is understanding, spiritual understanding. And I got news for you. It ain't me sitting up here quoting scriptures saying I want all you guys to see it my way because I'm right because then all we got back is great big old king me a little old you mm -hmm. it ain't room but for one king in this kingdom and it ain't me the king of kings the lord of lord Jesus Christ Amen. when we take our crowns off and cast them at his feet okay and then then you can have spiritual understanding, or well, uh, a natural understanding this way. We read the scripture, and we read it over, and we read it over, and we read it over, and we read in there about predestination, and we find out, wow, that's got to be about me, because God looked from the foundation of the world, and God says, you know, I, I like Jesus a lot. Jesus is pretty good, but I can't do this without you. I have got to have you in my fold. Come on. You see what I mean? I know there's people that do that. People say, you know, predestination ain't about Jesus, it's about me. Because he said, you know what, Jesus, he's pretty good, but if I can get a good team around him, he can take this thing all the way. So I have my own view of spiritual understanding, and then spiritual understanding really goes back to me saying, hey, guys, it's really all about me, and, and Jesus is involved in it, you know, somewhat, but, you know, See, we get way out there in left field, guys, what I'm telling you. We get way out in left field. If you don't think that doctrine is out there, let me give you one word for it. Calvinism. Yes. That's exactly where it is. Yes. And there's a whole group of people out there in that very thing. Why? It's natural understanding of a spiritual thing. Yes. Natural understanding with the natural mind. I'm going to tell you what real spiritual understanding will do. It will transform the soul. I mean, when you really begin to see Jesus, you know, people say all this gray stuff and all this other stuff. I'm going to tell you what. People say, if I believe like you, I'd go do whatever. If you believe like me, you couldn't right. go do whatever. Right. There, you, there's a difference. Why? Because I am dead in my life as he is with Christ in God. Yes. It's almost like you don't have a choice anymore. Dead man don't have a choice. That's right. He don't have a choice. Christ liveth in me. Yes. That's what changes you. Yes. That's what changes you. It doesn't change your mind about things. It changes your soul. Mm -hmm. And that's what salvation with God is all about anyway. Transformation of the soul. Transformation of the soul, transformed into what? Into the, His image. Yes. Patty always talks about this. Listen to this. It's all about the soul being transformed into the nature, the character, the image of Christ. It's about the relationship <laughs> and fellowship of the Father and the Son. Listen to this. Taking place in you. Mm -hmm. The relationship of God Almighty and His blessed Son taking place in you, you participating in that relationship. 
It's, listen, you know what Jesus said? He said, it's about you eating my flesh, drinking my blood. Now that sounds, see, that's offensive. Now we have said that so much that we'll say, okay, yeah, yeah, I understand, you know. But what he's really saying is, it's not just about you believing in eating my flesh and drinking my blood. It's actually about you participating. It's a believing into participation. I'm going to get somewhere here in a minute. Y'all stay with me. It's about an encounter face, face to face. You know, this deceit about spiritual understanding all started back in the garden. Y'all know that. All the way back there. Um, you know, Satan said, if you eat this, you'll be like God. You'll know what God knows. You'll understand what God understands. That's not spiritual understanding. It, like I told you before, whatever you and I can understand, we will pervert it. We will <coughs> pervert it. Why? Because, again, we've understood it in the realm of our biases and prejudice. Mm -hmm. You know, the scripture says that he told the sons of Cohen, after they'd covered everything up, to not touch any of the <coughs> spiritual things of that, of that temple of Moses. Mm -hmm. You know why? Mm -hmm. He didn't want them to defile it. And the same thing is true for us today because as soon as you grab a hold of something with your natural mind, yeah. you're going to mess it up. So then what is <coughs> what is spiritual understanding? You know, I mean, why do we, we meet out here? Do we meet out here so that I can teach you about spiritual understanding? Or, or any of that. I'm going to tell you this. The reason we gather out here to, is for the appearing of the Lord. Yeah, yeah. That's why we gather. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there shall I be in the midst. Mm -hmm. So that is our gathering. It's not gathering out here so that I can make you smarter. Mm -hmm. that, that's not it. You know, let me say this. Scripture... All scripture is given by the Spirit, inspiration of God. So really, scripture is spiritual. Yeah. Even the law, Paul said in Romans 7, the law was spiritual. Yeah. So what's it all go back to? The understanding. So what is spiritual understanding then that's distinct from natural understanding? A spiritual understanding, listen to this, is to have the understanding of the Spirit working in us pertaining to all things, working in you. It's not me understanding the gifts of the Spirit, the work of the Spirit, numbering them, naming them, and claiming them. Spiritual understanding is the understanding of the Spirit, for He alone has spiritual understanding. Yeah. So spiritual understanding, are, are you getting what I'm yeah. saying? Spiritual understanding is not you understanding something, because spiritual understanding is the Spirit Himself working His understanding in you. Now, I just said a mouthful right there. I just said a mouthful right there. Because we want to grab a hold of it and make it mine. He doesn't take understanding and give it to you like pocket candy. Oh, here's some understanding, Josh. I want you to have some understanding. No. It's the Spirit himself in you working his understanding. Now, I'm going to go somewhere with this here just in a minute. Because you'll see. You'll see. You remember what he says? Yeah, let me go read the scripture. I guess man comes on Sunday, he's got to read something, don't he? Can't go all the time. That man never even opened up his Bible. <laughs> oh, yeah. John 16, how be it, I mean, verse 13, when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. Yes. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. Listen to what he just said. Yeah. He is not giving you spiritual understanding. What did he say? He will show it unto you. Now, what's the it that he's going to show <coughs> Well, 
If you go back, it is, is not even in there. He's going to show unto you. He's going to show, show unto you. So stay with me here a second. No coffin. <laughs> That's why I always have to chew on a piece of candy because I get, I get dry and I get hacky. <laughs> Spiritual, uh, the Spirit is always teaching. Spiritual understanding is to have the understanding of the Spirit in all things. It's never stagnant. Remember I told you, He's always wanting you to grow up. It's there transforming the soul, the spirit working in you according to his understanding of all things. And let me tell you, he has a very specific understanding concerning all things. His understanding is distinct. I, I'm, I bring you that because i got to go somewhere. This was on my mind. I, I got talking about this spiritual understanding. And I thought, well, I talked about this Thursday or Wednesday. It's been on my mind for two weeks. And I, I kept going last night, finally had to put everything up. I got up this morning, spent an hour and a half, and I finally said, if I don't go and talk about this, I'm going to be in a world hurt. So let's go to Matthew 13. Because I want to tell you a little something about spiritual understanding here and the condition, why things are the way they are. Matthew 13 Verse 1, the same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went to a ship and sat. The whole multitude stood on the shore, and he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. I want to tell you something. First of all, he's talking to Israel. He's not talking to unbelievers. He's not talking to Greeks. He's talking to his church, his people. But these people had, they had the law, they had the prophets, they had the promises, they had the tabernacle, they had the priesthood, and about 2,000 years worth of tradition under their belt. They had some understanding, right? They had it going on. Amen. But this is the condition Jesus found them in. And I'm going to tell you what, this is the condition of the church today. A sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. And I know what you're saying right now in your mind. My God, I've heard this parable for 37 years. I'm tired of it. Let's hurry. Let's move on. I know he's going to talk about the condition of my heart. i got a hard heart. Oh, well, who cares? <laughs> you know what that is? That's your natural understanding. Yes. Saying, let's hurry up. Hurry up and get on something else. Right? But I'm going to tell you, that's the same thing these guys were saying. Because Jesus, I mean, let me tell you this. Nicodemus. And here, here's Nicodemus. He's a Jew, right? And, and y'all know what a proselyte is. Let me say that. A proselyte would be in the Jewish community someone other than a Jew coming in to be part of them. So in other words, you had to go through certain rites to be a part of their nation. We would call that being born again, or we would call that baptism or something of that nature. So they had their ritual where they could bring in a Greek or they could bring in a somebody else. They, they, they had a name called proselyte. How do you think Nicodemus felt when Jesus said, you must be born again? Because you know what he's thinking? Now, wait a minute. I'm already a Jew. I'm already Israel. Abraham was my father. Now, if you would have said be born again to that Greek over there, I would have understood that. Yeah. But you're telling me yeah. I need to be born again? I'm already a part of it. So here's Jesus talking to these same people saying about this, and these people are saying, you're telling me? Because always the stony heart is for George. It ain't never for me because I see his flaws. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you see what I mean? Because as soon as we start talking a condition about somebody else, we can always name four people. Well, I know that's Johnny over there because Johnny took me. It's about me. Yeah. No way. That is me. 
I've been going and going and going. But some seeds fell by the wayside. The fowls came to devour them up. Some fell on stony places where they had not much earth. Forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. The sun was up. They were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. Some fell among thorns. Thorns sprung up and choked them out. But other fell into good ground and brought forth some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirty. Who hath ears to hear? Let him hear. Who hath ears to hear? You know what he's saying? Who can understand this? Yeah. Who understands what I'm just talking about? Oh, Jesus, I understand. I understand if you throw some, some seed out there, then the people's hearts all messed up. But my heart's good ground. And, oh, yeah, you can do whatever because i got a lot of understanding. And, the, you know, you can give me a whole lot. And you remember, Lord, you predestinated me. And, and you remember the Bible said you gave me five talents. And I got five talents. And I made that into 27 talents. And, oh, yeah, man, I'm good ground. I got it. You know, I'm, I'm good ground. I don't know about y'all, but I'm good ground <laughs> right oh. here. Yeah. Because I got a whole lot more understanding than y'all got. Because I read more. I mean, I just can't help it. God gave me a lot more, you know. I can't help it. He predestinated it. I'm not boasting. <laughs> have y'all ever talked to anybody like that besides me? I have. I don't want to brag or nothing, you know, but his grace, I mean, you know, he looked, I mean, I didn't make myself this great. He made me. I got to give God the credit for me being so smart. Yeah. 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 Lord have mercy. God help us all. I wonder how many people that I have talked to and have thought that very thing about me and I'm pointing it at them. Lord have mercy, help us. You know, he's not speaking of natural ground here, guys. He's talking about condition of the heart. We know that. Yeah. We know that. He's talking about old covenant Israel's present condition. I'm going to tell you what, old covenant, we're not old covenant Israel. Every time God shows up, he takes away the first that he may establish the second. When he comes in with his consuming fire, only thing left is Christ. Yeah. It burns up everything else. Yeah. So there's a lot of removal, a lot of removal that takes place. And, you know, we talked about this one time, but i got to go visit this here just real quick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip back over here and we'll come back to this parable. Luke chapter 4, the Lord is... is uh, You remember the, the Lord? He comes into the church. I can just see it right now. He comes into the church. It's his day to read. He says, okay, guys, uh, here, I'm going to read out of Isaiah today. So they hand him the scripture of Isaiah. And he stands up and he reads. And y'all know what he reads. I'm, you know, I'm come to heal the sick and, you know, bind up the broken heart and all that other stuff. But then here's the thing. He takes the book of Isaiah and he closed the book. Yeah. Listen to what I'm telling you. He took the book of Isaiah and he closed the book. He closed that book and he said, this day, I'm done with that. Yeah. That's what he said, I'm done with that. Now, listen, for 1,500 years, they've been reading Isaiah. And what Isaiah said, you know what Jesus said? Listen, guys, no more is Isaiah going to speak to you. From now on, if you go here, it's going to be by the Son. Amen. It's not going to be in the prophets anymore because you had your spiritual understanding, but now let my understanding work in you. Let me work in you. Yes. I'm closing your book. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's good. Do you see? And I'm going to tell you what, guys. As long as your book is open, <laughs> what you need, let me say it this way, you need the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart and close your book. Right. You need him to come in and take all your understanding, all your prophets, all your law, everything you've understood, close the book and say, this day I'm done with that. Yeah. And you know what? They were looking around saying, what did he just say? <laughs> Isaiah said the Messiah is coming and this guy, well, why don't you, Jesus, just get out of the way? Yeah. See, some of that seed fell on hard ground. Yeah. 
In other words, you've heard the prophets so long. Yeah. You've read the law so much. You've studied the scripture so much that when I'm standing here before you, you cannot see me. And you cannot hear me. That's right. You just cannot. So thank God he comes in. I'm going to tell you what, guys. I know earlier this year he came into my heart and closed my book. He closed it. And then you know what I was? Done for. Empty. No understanding at all. I'm finished. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? Let me, let me give you a couple scriptures here real quick. Peter, sec, I have to turn right to it. Verse 19. We have a more sure word of prophecy. Wherefore ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. A more sure word. I wonder what that sure word is because I thought I understood. I thought I had a sure word. Yeah. But he said when the day star arises, when the light comes, Jesus is the light of the world. Yeah. Yeah. He'll close that book, you know, this scripture is just on my mind a little bit. I'm just going to touch on it for just a second. Maybe, maybe get your wheels turning. Isaiah <laughs> chapter 45. I form the light. I create darkness. Yeah. I make peace. I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Mm -hmm. We get wondering, wow, what does that mean? Let me tell you something. He formed the light yes. mm -hmm. right there in Mary's belly. Yes. Oh, yeah. He created the darkness of that womb to put that light in. Mm -hmm. Oh, do you see what I'm talking about? I formed the light right in your darkness. Yes. I formed, and the darkness comprehended it not. That's right. Uh huh. This light is busting through. Yes. This light is busting through. He said, I got something to tell you. I formed that light. Uh huh. And I created a place to put it right in the darkness. Isn't that something? That is awesome. Amen. Isn't that something? Amen. Oh, yeah. Now, here's Peter saying this day star is going to rise in your heart. Now, remember, I said he closed the book. So now what are we going to do? The book's closed. Now, I don't know what I'm going to be doing. Well, let me just read you another scripture here. There's only one that's worthy to open the book. Yes. yes. Thank God only one's worthy to come and close the book, but I thank God Almighty that he didn't just leave it closed. Look at this verse. Right. And he came and took the book yeah. out of the right hand of him that sat on the throne. He came and took the book. Who is oh, he? Yeah. That's Jesus oh, Christ. Nice. That's, the, that's the lamb slain. He is the one that's worthy to come and take the book and open the book. I was looking last night, I was doing this study. Do you know how many times, well, I don't even know how many times, but this is something you can go look at. All through the scriptures, I saw, I saw, yeah. I saw, I saw. Can you imagine? I mean, have you ever talked to a little kid that's come running in at, at nighttime or something, they're all excited and they're running, it's like, what happened? What happened? I saw. <laughs> They don't even know what they saw. It could be a monster. It could be a dog. It could be an alien. It could be, but I saw. I'm going to tell you what, guys. You'll be the same way when you begin to see. When you begin to see Jesus. I'm going to tell you what. I can tell when somebody's seen Jesus or not. Because when you see Jesus, you're just like John was. You fall on your face as dead. And your only thing now is, I saw. Yes. I saw. <laughs> Oh, Lord, don't, don't let me tell you that you got to do this and you got to do this, but I saw the throne. Yeah. I saw the rainbow. I saw all the horses. I saw the rocks. I saw the mountain on fire. I saw. Do you see? You know, listen. You go read. I'm just going to flip over there. We'll go back to Matthew. Ezekiel. Now it came to pass. In the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, because I'm going to tell you what, when you see something, you remember that day. Yes. You remember that day. 
I was among the captains. I was going to church just like everybody else. We got up early in the morning. We were doing our thing, you know. Got my pretty orange <laughs> shirt on and, you know, got my best socks on, spray on, smelly on, and, you know, we was all out doing our thing. We was by the river T-Bar. The heavens were open. Listen, guys, many messages are on the open heavens. Lots of messages on the open heavens. I even got a book at home called The Open Heavens. God's going to pour out his blessings. God's going to do all these things from the open heavens. But you just missed the whole view. The heavens are open for one reason, Pastor Jack. One reason is the heaven open. I wonder what that is. And I saw the vision of God. What is the vision of God? Jesus Christ. And the heavens is open up for one reason. So you can see Jesus. Because when you see Jesus, oh, Lord, things change. Thank God he comes in and closes our book and says, Guys, you don't need to look there anymore. I'm it. Yes. I'm the real deal. Yes. Moses, he spoke of me. Yes. Abraham, before Abraham was, I am. Let me tell you something, guys. I'm it. Yes. Hallelujah. They wouldn't receive it. They said, wait a minute. You know what they said over there, John, after he fed the multitudes? He fed the multitudes. He fed the multitudes. 5,000 he fed them. You know what they did? They come running down through there and they said, that's our king right there. That man, we're going to make Jesus king. You know what happened? As soon as they said, we're going to make him king, he left. Yeah. He didn't come here to be king. He came here to go to the cross. Yes. yes. I want you to think about that. Now, here he is. Let me tell you how offensive it was when they nailed, when they stripped him down, beat him to a pulp, put him on the cross. Here's the king of glory on the cross. And you know what they said? Pilate comes out and he says, there's your king right there. Yeah. I done made the superscription. Jesus of Nazareth, king of the Jews. What I've written, I've written. Stick that up there. They said, no, no, no. We'll not have that man to be king over us. Come on. We don't want a king that's going to die. We want a king that's going to kill everybody else yeah. and say, I am right. Yes. I don't want to be made one with you because I don't like you. Yeah. I want a king that's going to do it my way. Oh, yes. It's offensive. It was offensive to the devil. The devil tried to get him to do the same thing. Just bow down to me. Look at all these kingdoms. You can have all these. If you'll just bow down to me. Yes. I'm going to tell you what. How did he defeat the devil? He destroyed him. How? Through death. Wonder what death? The death of the cross. How did he take away prejudice? The death of the cross. How did he take away Jew? The cross. How did he take away Gentile? The cross. How did he take away me and you and all of our differences? The cross. I'm telling you what, guys, if we got differences among us, let the cross work in us. Yes. Let the cross work in it. It's an ongoing, present work, a reality that is in you right now that if I'm having trouble, let the cross. Peter knew it so much, he said, with his stripes, we're healed. How are we healed? In the power of the cross. Yes. Without that power of the cross, guys, there's no healing. There's no nothing. All in that power of the cross. Let me, let me get back here. Let me just finish up right here. Get back over here to Matthew. Matthew 13. And I'm in verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given. And he shall have more abundance, but whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Now that sounds very odd to me because we're going to tell our kids that if you got two, share with your brother. You know, but what he's saying, if you got two and he ain't got none, I'm going to still take away from him and give to you. See, you know, we go back into natural understanding. Natural Natural understanding. Let me, 
He said, therefore I speak to them in parables. Because see, because they see not and hearing they hear not, neither do they what? Understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which said, By hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. It wasn't God predestinating them to close them. They closed their eyes. Yes. At least at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should... Heal them, but blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. He's talking to them about a condition of the ground. He's telling them, guys, you have heard so much. And I'm going to tell you what the hardest people, and I don't want to offend nobody, but if it does, I know where the offense comes from. The hardest people to deal with are people who's been in church their whole life. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's what he's telling these people right here. You've got 1,500 years of tradition under your belt. Everybody told you I was coming. And now I'm here. And yeah. you won't hear me. Yeah. You won't open your eyes to see me. You've closed your own eyes. I've closed your book. I've done all these other things. And still yet, you will not hear me. Now, where, how does that affect us, guys? I want to tell you why. Where is Christ now? Christ is in us. The hope, the expectation of glory. He says, I am in you. Yes. The King of Kings, the Holy Spirit, yeah. is in you. That's right. But do we walk around and act like it? Or do we act like them old hard-hearted Jews? And we say, one of these days, and we get our view of salvation, and we get our view of heaven, and we get our view of hell, and we get our view of this, and we get our view of end time events, and ecclesiastical orders, and all these other things. And we will not let his understanding come into our heart. That's right. We've got these four types of ground. You remember these types of ground? we got wayside ground. We got stony places, we got thorns and thistles, and we got good ground. Yes. Good ground. So what makes it what makes it good ground? I mean, is really let's settle this, and I'll be out of your way. Is there any trouble with the seed? We know the seed is Christ. The seed is perfect. That's right. So the only trouble is the ground, and that's us. Yes. Right? The only trouble is the ground. So this wayside place, I'm gonna tell you what the wayside is. That's where people walk. That's your just your your daily walk. This, let me say it this way. This is what I stand on. Right? This is how I walk. Yes. You see what I'm saying? This is my rules to live yeah. by. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. You see, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. This is my kingdom because that's what a kingdom is. Let this mind be in you as also in Christ Jesus. That is your own kingdom right there and you ain't giving that kingdom up. This is the way I've understood it my whole life. And I ain't letting it go for nobody. This is the way we've always done it. Then we got stony places. What was it about the stony places? When the seed started taking root right there, if the sun came out and dried it up, why? Shallowness. Very shallow. Had no depth. Had no depth. You remember uh, the prophet Ezekiel and that angel said, come on out. I'm gonna, you know, you've been in this angle deep stuff long enough. I'm going to take you out into waters to swim in. Waters that cannot be passed over. Yeah. I'm going to take you out into the deep. Yeah. That's where he took Peter, wasn't it? Let's launch out into the deep. Mm -hmm. Can't catch no fish over here in this little brook. Let's go out into the deep. That's what he wants to bring you, out into the deep. Yes. <laughs> I want to bring you into the deep. Of course, what are the thorns? Cares of this world. I'm going to tell you what, guys, how many of you have the cares of this world? Well, we got to, you know, I got to pay bills, I got to do this, I got to do that. <clears throat> got to worry about this, got to worry about that. I even heard one, one person told me this one time, said, if you don't worry, it means you don't care. Yeah. That's baloney. <laughs> that is baloney. I could just see Jesus right now on that boat said, oh, Lord, I, I don't know. <laughs> you told me to go to the other side, now the big storm. <laughs> I mean, what am I going to do, Josh? I don't know. I, Lord, God, I mean, Father, let's, uh, let's have a prayer circle. <laughs> yeah. You know, 
I could just, I mean, got into a little state of that one time. Yeah. He said, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass. But let me tell you what, as soon as the father sent that angel down there and comforted him, what happened? He come back, disciple was asleep. He said, all right, boys, time to get up. Let's go. Yeah. I know where I'm going. I'm going straight to that cause. For this cause came I into the world. Yes. That's why I'm here, guys. Yes. Because this is what's going to set the creation free right yes. here. That's why I came to this cross right here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. James says, count it all joy. And then Jesus, I can just see him now when he's whipping his back and doing all these other things. Then he said, I count it all joy. I count it all joy. I count it all joy. Why? For the joy that was set before him. Amen. What was that? Oh, we talked about that joy that was set before him, wasn't it? That's resurrection, brother. That is Christ in you. Yes. Yes. Christ in you. Yes. You know what this you know what made this ground good? It's absolute <laughs> nothingness. It didn't have no stones. It didn't have no talents. It couldn't sing good. It couldn't play the guitar. And it couldn't preach with a hoop. Because he said, not many wise after this world and not many noble are called. It's the absolute nothingness of the ground that makes the ground good. Yeah. Yeah. Why? He said, except a quarter of wheat fall into the ground and do what? Die, it abideth alone. You know what your heart is there for? To receive the death of Jesus. Amen. That is the condition of the heart. And let me tell you what the heart don't want. It don't want his death. That's Peter right. didn't want his death. He said, right. you know what, Lord? I'll go die for you. Yeah. And that's what Peter said, guys. And that's what we say. I'm going to lay my life down for the Lord. Yeah. Don't tell me to just be still and let his death work in me. I've got to do something. I've got, I'm have got. i a good singer. I've got a lot of talents, and I can do this, and I can do that. You don't want none of that. He wants good ground. He wants ground that will stay there and let his death work in them. And let me tell you something, guys. The Lord giveth the increase. Now, what you see is the fruit, right? Because it's, <coughs> that seed falls to the ground and dies about alone, but if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. What you see is the result. You look over there and you say, man, look at that fruit. Look at that fruit. What you're seeing is the result, but the result of what? The result of the death. Yeah. The result of the death. Now, listen to what I'm telling you. The result of all God's workings is done where you can't even see it. It's done in the ground, yeah. Yeah. behind the scenes. Right. The increase you don't even know about, all you see is the result. All you see is the fruit. <coughs> the good ground, guys, will receive his death. I'm going to give you this last scripture. I'll hand it back to Patty. I already quoted this once, but let me say it again. This is the condition of our heart. And this is what I ask you today. To as many as received him. Now listen, guys. There's a whole lot of us who run around and say, I'm receiving Jesus. But it's the whole Jesus. So what is the receiving of him? Receiving his death. To them, I gave the power to become the sons of God. To as many as received his death. God bless you.